Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Osteoarthritis Action Alliance Lunch and Learn webinar for January 18, 2017. My name is Kirsten Ambrose, and I'd like to wish everyone a Happy New Year. Thanks for joining our presentation this month. Our presenter is Dr. Nancy Baker, Associate Professor in the Department of Occupational Therapy at the University of Pittsburgh School of Health and Rehabilitation Sciences. She is also a regular panelist for our Experts in Arthritis program, a program that was developed by members of the United States Bone and Joint Initiative, or USBJI, the U.S. National Action Network of the Worldwide Bone and Joint Decade, a global campaign to raise awareness about musculoskeletal, musculoskeletal disorders to improve their prevention, diagnosis, and treatment. Launched in 2007, the Experts in Arthritis program offers people with arthritis the opportunity to be informed about current scientific evidence and management strategies in the treatment and care of osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and juvenile arthritis. Dr. Baker will tell us more about the purpose and content of this program and ways to participate in your local area as a session host or an attendee. Welcome, Dr. Baker. Thank you very much, Chris, and it's a pleasure to be here. Um, so today I was invited to talk a little bit about our program, Experts in Arthritis, um, developed by the U.S. Bone and Joint Initiative. And my intent today is to talk a little bit about the past of uh, Experts in Arthritis, where it came from, what we are currently doing, and uh, just a little bit about the future uh, in the last couple of slides. So before I can start to talk about Experts in Arthritis, I've got to talk a little bit about the past and where Experts in Arthritis came from. And Experts in Arthritis um, is a program from the U.S. Bone and Joint Initiative, which is, was developed back in the late 1990s um, as part of a response to a growing identification that musculoskeletal disorders were underrecognized and underappreciated and underfunded, not only in the United States but in the world in general. And in the late 1990s, uh, a worldwide group of individuals interested in musculoskeletal health came together and determined that we needed to develop and, uh, and get more education information and attention paid to musculoskeletal disorders. And under their auspices, and over a couple of years, they developed what was called the U.S. Uh, excuse me, the Bone and Joint Decade. And the Bone and Joint Decade ran from 2000 to about 2010 and was a worldwide uh, organization that worked to promote musculoskeletal health. The U.S. Bone and Joint Initiative, which was the U.S. United States Bone and Joint Decade in, that, in those 10 years, was the U.S. arm of that worldwide um, global alliance for musculoskeletal health. And during that 10 years, it had multiple programs aimed at improving and decreasing the recognition for musculoskeletal health during the bone and joint decade. At the end of the decade, the, they shifted their name to the United States Bone and Joint Initiative, recognizing that we still needed to continue to promote musculoskeletal health and promote funding and recognition for the disorders related in those fields. So the US, U.S. Bone and Joint Initiative has been around for several years, since basically 2000. Um, and it is a multidisciplinary disciplinary initiative which is concerned with raising awareness of musculoskeletal conditions, improving education about these conditions, their prevention and treatment, and increasing research. So the U.S. Bone and Joint Initiative is part of the larger network uh, of worldwide health that is looking at musculoskeletal disorders and is working within the United States to raise awareness for musculoskeletal disorders. So you can see their goals are primarily about education and awareness and empowering patients to be able to participate in their own decisions and care and treatment. They also aim to increase funding for activities as well as research and to seek and promote cost-effective prevention and treatment of musculoskeletal injuries and disorders. So the U.S. Bone and Joint Initiative has several initiatives that it uses to promote these goals. And experts in arthritis is one of these. And I just want to sort of cover the breadth in just a few words of what they're doing so you can get an idea of where experts in arthritis falls within this overall initiative. The U.S. Bone and Joint Initiative has several programs. 
One of them is the burden of musculoskeletal disease in the United States, also affectionately known as Venus. This is an online forum that contains tremendous, tremendous amounts of information about prevalence, incidence of musculoskeletal conditions in the United States um, and is designed to be an interactive forum where you can obtain information about, for instance, the number of females that have rheumatoid arthritis, the extent of hospital care for people with um, joint replacement. It looks at low back pain. It looks at pretty much a wide variety of musculoskeletal disorders and provides a tremendous amount of reference material that can be used for research, advocacy, and general knowledge about musculoskeletal disorders. If you have not looked at the burden of musculoskeletal diseases in the United States, I would highly recommend it as an excellent source of information to help promote musculoskeletal um, disease and the prevention of musculoskeletal disease in your area. Project 100 is another ongoing project in the U.S. Bone and Joint Initiative, which is looking at uh, increasing the amount of education that undergraduates receive related to musculoskeletal health. So it has worked over the years to increase the amount of time that is spent on musculoskeletal health in medical curriculum and increase the number of schools that provide this essential information. Um, ongoing process, they are actually working towards Project 1000 now. So they are continuing to, to move this forward. The Young Investigators Initiative addresses the research aspect of um, musculoskeletal health. It's been acknowledged that their musculoskeletal health is very underfunded in NIH. And in order to promote funding for investigators interested in musculoskeletal health, Young Investigators was developed to provide people who are early in their career interested in musculoskeletal health with access to mentors who can help them develop the strongest grants so that they can receive funding from NIH to continue research in musculoskeletal health. Um, in the years since 2005 that Young Investigators has been alive, they've had over 300 participants, of which 184 have obtained funding of, for over 900 grants and $220 million, $222 million. So it's been a very successful initiative. And then there's their public education program, which is what experts in arthritis is part of. And they have a fairly extensive um, education, number of education programs. They have Fit to a T, which looks at bone health and osteoporosis. They have um, PBNJ, which is education aimed at teens and young adults um, to help them understand how to prevent musculoskeletal disorders. And then there's Experts in Arthritis, which is a seminar for people with arthritis um, and those who care about them. Now, Experts in Arthritis has been around, um, as uh, Kirsten mentioned, since about 2007. And it has morphed into a free nationwide patient education program, um, which is delivered live in the community of the people who are interested in it. So the program itself is structured, um, but it is always delivered by somebody in the community to the community, so it provides uh, it is able to have the background um, and aim more at community interests and concerns than a straight canned program can do. It usually lasts about 60 to 90 minutes um, and has evidence-based sessions that are delivered by these experts in the community. Its focus is on providing information on osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and to some degree, juvenile arthritis, although the primary focus is the adult arthritis. It focuses in on providing self-management strategies, um, using current scientific evidence to inform participants about ways that they can manage and control their osteoarthritis and take control of their lives. So the basic goals of, of expert in arthritis is to provide this far-reaching evidence-based program. And one of our major goals is to ensure that it is delivered around the country, that it is not centered in one area, that it can be delivered nationwide. We are 
looking to educate people about arthritis-based interventions um, and communicate to them the importance of their patient advocacy and their ability to communicate with the doctor to take control of their treatment. So our, a lot of the focus of our um, structured program is giving them some tips and ideas about how they can communicate and understand and control their own arthritis disease. We encourage this direct exchange with physicians and allied health professionals by having experts at the program from their community, um, which allows them to ask questions and receive answers that directly are related to their particular um, disorder. And it also allows us to create contacts for them within the community that they can go to to get up-to-date information to facilitate the self-management that they need to do. A typical Experts in Arthritis program, as I mentioned earlier, is about 60 to 90 minutes long. Generally, people select a 60-minute program. It just seems to be a, a time frame that uh, fits well into many community programs. But we do offer the 90-minute session if someone would like to be more in-depth uh, with the uh, program. It is always led by a local expert or experts. Sometimes we have a couple of people uh, leading the session. They are provided with an evidence-based PowerPoint presentation that has not a script, but basically a series of talking points that help them to be able to guide the discussion um, and keep it on track. And then after about this 20-minute session, there is a question and answer session, which fills up the remaining amount of time. And this question and answer session allows the participants to ask and receive answers about things that are of concern to them that maybe weren't covered in the uh, discussion or that were not covered as in-depth as they would like. We also provide evidence-based uh, handouts. And we frequently partner with a local arthritis foundation to provide materials from there. So anybody who is giving this program receives this, these kind of guidelines and this kind of packet to help them to be able to do an expert in arthritis program in their community. Typically, what's covered in uh, the PowerPoint are, first of all, the underlying focus of emphasizing self-efficacy and empowerment. So whatever topic we're talking about, we continually return back to the idea that they are in control, that they need to take charge, that they can empower their own treatment in order to get the best care possible. We also have a series of slides that we call Arthritis 101. We discovered as we did this particular um, program that a lot of times people came in not knowing exactly what kind, of what kind of arthritis they had. Or rather, I should say, people with osteoarthritis often did not know what kind of arthritis they had. People with rheumatoid arthritis were often very well informed because they were under the care of a rheumatologist. But we found it was useful at the beginning to send some groundworks about what different types of arthritis were and the sort of symptoms and conditions related with them. We spend uh, some time talking about self-management basics. And this is to allow us to set the stage and help them to understand the kind of things that they can do to self-manage their disorder. We do not teach them how to do it. We don't have the time. But we help them to understand that this kind of treatment is available, that they can access this to be able to improve their own care, um, and help them to understand that their community probably offers programs that they can use in order to expand their skills in the future. We cover nutrition and complementary medicines. This is an area of great interest to many people with osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and they frequently ask questions in this. So we added our, a section that specifically address this area. It talks a little bit about weight management, which is, again, an area that people with osteoarthritis in particular have questions about, um, but also nutrition and related to symptom control. And we talk a bit about complementary medicines. Not so much which ones to use, but more of how to think about how to use them, how to be aware when they might be uh, looking at a complementary medicine that might not be effective, how to check for effectiveness, and most importantly, to talk with their um, physician before they started any complementary medicines to make sure that they would work well with whatever treatment they were receiving. So part of our focus is discussing with their health professionals how to implement and self-manage their, 
their disease so that they can take control of it. Another area that we cover is exercise. Many participants seem to continue to have misconceptions that exercise is not something they can do with arthritis. So we have found it's very important to discuss why exercise is important and, what, and some of the concepts that they need to think about when doing exercise. Again, we don't teach them how to do an exercise program. We give them the information they need to be able to go out and start looking within the community for exercise programs that will help them to move forward. After we complete the PowerPoint, the expert is, answers the question. And the Q question and answer session usually consists of the participants writing their questions prior to the session um, on slips of paper and giving them either to a moderator or to the expert himself. And we found this work method works particularly well for a couple of reasons. Um, one is that participants in this program when they ask a question, they often preface it with a fairly long narrative about their disease and disorder and what they've been experiencing. This is a very important aspect of self-management self and self-efficacy, but it takes a lot of time for someone to explain about their disorder. And so we found it's better to have them write the question down because it shortens the question. It also allows us to put questions by topic so that we can not answer the same question multiple times, but answer multiple variants of the question with one answer. One answer. Another reason we found it's important to, to write the questions down in general is that people will often ask for specific individualized treatment um, advice. So they ask, should I be taking this medication? Should I be doing this? And we don't want to be responding to those kind of questions. We don't want to provide specific diagnostic treatment. We want to provide general information. So again, by writing the questions down, we can screen out very specific individualized questions and focus on broad concepts. That's not to say that if we have enough time in a session, we won't open up the floor for, for overall for questions from the floor. But a lot of times, we've answered the questions well enough that we don't have a lot at the end. So we have the expert answer these questions by topic. And uh, there is a nice give and take between the audience and the expert um, in order to be able to answer and facilitate questions about their disorder. The types of questions we get range. There is a huge range of questions that we get. But a lot, they can be sort of divided into um, different types of questions. We get questions about what the underlying cause of osteoarthritis is. We get questions about di diagnosis. What are these things I'm experiencing? What do they mean? We do get some questions about medication that are general. For instance, this question about Tylenol and ibuprofen. Um, we get questions about, as I said, exercise, nutrition, and weight loss. Um, these are common, common themes among these individuals, uh, trying to understand why it's important to do these things and what they can do about them. We also do get questions about supplements um, and complementary medicine. And again, we use the evidence to help us answer these questions and continue to promote conversations with health professionals to make decisions about supplements and complementary medicine use for these clients. So the questions range, and the experts are able to respond to specific concerns as well as widespread general um, content questions. We include with the program supplemental fact sheets um, quite, that we have four of them now. Uh, one is about talking to the health professional and some tips about the best way to, um, to talk to a professional in a, an appointment. We give some basic tips about controlling pain, things like modalities and um, how to uh, manage pain in general. We do have a handout on supplements, again, discussing ways to identify if there are issues with the supplements and how to identify good supplements versus questionable supplements, again, with the constant reminder to talk with their physician before they start anything. And we talk about um, healthy diet, what kind of diet and information is uh, appropriate for various and assorted conditions, and some thoughts and ideas about uh, different diets that was developed here at Pittsburgh by the nutrition department. Recently, we started to take experts in arthritis online. And we have developed a um, short 
video for osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, as well as a form of Arthritis 101. And I'd like to take the opportunity for you to see this so you can get an idea of, of what this particular programming looks like. And Kirsten said she could run this, so let's see if she can get it on. Roberta stared gloomily out the window. Okay, Her lovely flower here. gardens are a mess, but kneeling to pull weeds is too painful. Both her knees hurt, but the pain is worse in the knee she damaged playing so tennis as a teenager. As a hairdresser, years of standing have made matters worse. Damage from the injury and the wear and tear of work caused osteoarthritis in her knee. Her knee is so painful, she spends her evenings lying on the couch with a snack and a book. It feels better then, but her pain and stiffness keep getting worse. Weight gain over the years seems to put more strain on her knee. Roberta used to enjoy connecting with other gardeners on social media. Now, scrolling through their gorgeous photos makes her sad. Needing someone to understand her pain, Roberta searched social media for others with osteoarthritis. She found herself liking post after post from people who had overcome the challenges of osteoarthritis. Roberta realized her social media friends were learning to take control of their osteoarthritis. She decided she would too. She invested in a quality pair of shoes and took strolls around her garden, occasionally posing for a selfie. She subscribed to Denise's blog with healthy recipes for people with osteoarthritis. Her efforts to lose weight, helped by a healthier diet, home exercise program, and more physical activity, lessened her pain and improved her emotional health. Roberta relied on over-the-counter pain medications until Martin's update on pain relief through physical therapy, injections, and use of braces prompted her to explore these methods of pain management. Her social media friends cautioned her to check for scientific evidence and consult her physician before using supplements. When Roberta's knee pain made her think about giving up the job she loved, she considered a total joint replacement. While she discussed the pros and cons with her physician and specialists, she continued to lose weight eat better, and become stronger and more physically active, which would help make sure she had the best outcome if she chose to go ahead with the procedure. Roberta is now the leader of her osteoarthritis health team, working with her primary care physician, rheumatologist, orthopedic surgeon, and other health care specialists to get the information and assistance she needs to take charge of her arthritis. Do you or does someone you know have osteoarthritis? Although arthritis is common, you don't have to lose your ability to do what you love. Like Roberta, you can alter the plot lines in your own story. This video is brought to you by the United so States Bone and Joint Initiative. Sort of our in-person experts in our... I, think, I didn't hear any sound, so I don't know if you guys heard any sound either. Um, but if you're interested, you can watch it online um, and hear what they had to say if, if you didn't hear it. And... Um, it provides a nice background and overview of osteoarthritis and some, uh, some of the, oh good, I'm glad someone just typed it, they heard it just fine. So good, I'm glad, I could not hear it, so um, I'm glad. Um, so hopefully you enjoyed that. We have one for rheumatoid arthritis as well. Um, and it provides a nice background for individuals who um, need to go online and want a basic, um, clear, layman termed, uh, information about osteoarthritis and some things to think about osteoarthritis. So um, if you're interested in viewing that, um, the whole and the other programs that we've got on there, you can catch them at www.controlarthritis.org or go to the U.S. Bone and Joint Initiative. Um, they have the uh, arth experts in arthritis um, area that has these videos connected to them. So um, if you're interested in viewing more, um, feel free to go there, obviously.
So what has expert in arthritis done over the past few years? We've had 159 sessions in 21 states. We do about 30 to 40 sessions per year. We've had many organizations that we serve, both formal ones and informal ones. And I think it's really important that we've been able to get into the informal areas, such as the hospitals, churches, and religious communities, because we can help individuals to understand what's available um, and what they need to do to control their arthritis. If you're interested in doing an expert in arthritis session, um, what you need to do is request a session online. There are forms. You just have to go to U.S. Bone and Joint Initiative Experts in Arthritis, and there's an online request form. Once you fill it out, we will start talking with you and give you guidelines about how to set it up, how to plan for it. Um, we will uh, provide the programming, the handouts, the materials. The person who is giving the program has to provide the space and the technical in stuff do the recruitment and the advertising. In order to get an expert, some communities have experts that they like to use. And if, you, if a group does not have an expert, we uh, can help them track down an expert who can be part of it. And an expert can be anybody from a physician to a nurse to an occupational therapist to a physician's assistant, anybody who works with people who have rheumatic diseases or arthritis in some way, shape, or form. Um, once that for request is made, we work with you to make sure that you can, you can have the experts in arthritis session in your community. Our future plans, we want to expand our natural, national reach. We have 21 states. We want more. We want to increase the number of people, particularly people with arthritis, participating in, in updating and developing the program. We, use, we have used them. Or they have helped us develop previous programming, but we feel like we can use more help to make sure we're really meeting the needs of the community. We work with a lot of underserved populations because we work through communities and hospitals and churches. We want to increase our materials for those underserved populations. And we'd like to do some more of those videos. I have a greater online presence um, with those videos. Before I'm done, I'd like to acknowledge the advisory committee. We've had a lot of people working on this, and they've been very dedicated to putting this together. I'd like to acknowledge. Uh, the following groups who support experts in arthritis program with unrestricted educational grants. I'd like to acknowledge all the collaborating organizations. Again, there have been a lot of people who've worked with us. I'd like to thank you for attending this session. Um, and here are some EARLs if you would like to, again, look at the videos or go to U.S. Bone and Joint Initiative. And finally, I'd like to open the floor up for questions. Thank you very much, Dr. Baker. That was a great overview, I think, um, not just at the Experts in Arthritis Program, but also uh, all of USBJI's great resources. And I just want to point out for anybody, um, we are at our 30-minute time slot, so we will take questions for those who have them, and we'll stay a few minutes extra for those who do need to sign off. I just uh, thank you again for joining us and hope that you'll join us again next month for uh, obesity and osteoarthritis with Penny Gordon Larson. So back to our current um, presentation. Uh, if anybody does have any questions, do type them into your chat window. And you see we've posted a couple of those URLs down there in the chat window, too, if you want to refer to the whiteboard video or to any of the other resources. Um, I just wanted to echo from earlier in the presentation that you had called out uh, the bone and joints um, uh, burden of musculoskeletal diseases report. That really is an excellent report and wanted to just give that a little bit of emphasis for those who are listening and who want to share with uh, any policymakers or, or Congress folks in your districts. You know, of course, we are currently undergoing a whole lot of, of um, Upheaval, I'll say, <laughs> with and a <laughs> lot of questions. Nice <laughs> I'm trying to be diplomatic. We have a varied audience, so um, you know, certainly a great, great bit of information for them to review and and realize just how important it is to keep programs funded, like the Experts in Arthritis and some of our other community-based programs for arthritis. So do share those types of resources. Yeah, it, there is a tremendous amount of information on on. The, the Bemis website and the fact that you it has graphs and figures that you can download and use in presentations and uh, white papers, but you can also create your own, which I think is extremely useful. Um, I've used it; I use it multiple times. It's, it, it's just one of my go-to places when I'm trying to to pull up, you know, how many people have this problem. It's just huge. 
I know it is. We've actually referenced that quite a few times on some of our uh, website resource pages about the burden of osteoarthritis, and we refer to that in an infographic we're developing as well. So uh, definitely useful and very current. You know, it's hard to get these large swaths of population data, um, but uh, that is a nice current report. Oh, and we have somebody who's typed in um, that she has given the BMUS slide talk to the orthopedic residents at UNLV in Las Vegas. And thanks to uh, all of you for the useful orthopedic from, uh, and it was useful for orthopedic residency program. Apologies for there, that. There, uh, are, messy thing. there are slideshows, yeah, on, and, and a lot of different topic areas. So that's another thing. It's very, it's very widespread. It's not just arthritis. It is almost any, any musculoskeletal disorder that might be interesting. Very good. Well, I appreciate your taking the time to tell us about this program and, and uh, just how okay, useful I it can be. For... Sure. I appreciate the opportunity to do it. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye-bye.